Today we're going to be talking about an update in the Gannon Stout case. This is the case against his stepmother, Letitia Stout, who is currently in jail awaiting trial for his murder. Now, recently she has been returned to jail after spending some time in a psychiatric hospital where she was undergoing a competency evaluation ordered by the court to see if she's competent to stand trial. We do not know the outcome of that evaluation yet, but we're going to find out on September 8th. So, in the meantime, Letitia has taken it upon herself on August 12th to write a letter to the judge complaining about the mistreatment she is receiving in jail. So, we're going to read that letter, we're going to talk a little bit about it, and talk about what might be coming up at the hearing on the 8th. Let's get into it. Good luck, it's rough times. <laughs> All right, here we go. Good afternoon, sir. I thank you for taking the time out to read my letter and my concerns about an unfair process that is going on in my case. I have expressed these concerns several times to my defense team and feel that I have not been afforded my rights as a United States citizen. It has been five months and I have met with my defense team one time in March 2020. It is the middle of August. I understand this pandemic is unforeseen, but I don't feel that I should be held unconstitutionally, denied access to my attorneys, have constitutional rights violated, and be abused in the process. First, as you know, there is over 30,000 and growing pages of discovery in my case. I cannot successfully participate in my defense on a phone call three times a week, one hour, at the jail. I have no way to view any video, read any reports, review phone data, etc. I'm not an active participant in my case. I know that the jail is listening to my attorney-client calls, as on several occasions, I commented about someone or something specific, and the jail immediately acted upon it. Officers also wait outside the door, easy to hear, and sometimes a video camera is on at the TV near the phone. Sir, these things are a violation of my rights. In addition, I have no way to write things down, as I am always restrained, with more times than not causing injury. I understand you cannot tell the jail how to run their facility, but I know that I can't ignore my rights being violated. Next, sir, I understand that the Eighth Amendment protects cruel and unusual punishment, and I know the Supreme Court says punishment can be just for the crimes. However, I'm in a county jail, and I'm presumed innocent, not to mention I am innocent, and we will prove it. I have been a pillar pillar in my community in South Carolina. I have no adult record, never done drugs, and have a, I think that's supposed to say doctorate, degree in education. I've proven myself as a responsible citizen and should not be subjected to the cruel punishment that I receive at CJC. Over 15 plus times, I have been abused in transport ranging from injured ribs, not on my head, several ankle and wrist bleeding, bruises on my knee and my cell, lost a feeling in my hand several times, I've had to be on insure two weeks due to the poison comments, um, poison comments, I, I don't, I don't know, and just recently on 8-11-2020, I received threats in my peanut butter because I provided evidence of not only my innocence, but evidence that will show who it was through my PI. As a result of this, I assume their rumors use people in trusted positions in jail to send me threats in my food, and I'm terrified of what will happen next. I don't know how I'm supposed to properly defend myself if going through this unfair punishment, being denied my constitutional rights, being denied access to my attorneys, being under scrutiny causing daily mental disturbances, being restrained causing injuries, being denied law library access, etc. This is not okay in a country in which our country prides itself on democracy, a country with a flag that got a hole in it at Flanders, Ro Flanders Field in World War I, one that turned blood red in World War II, or the one that got cut with a sword at Chancellorsville. Through all this, the flag stood. We raised her up every morning because this country still stands for freedom, perseverance, justice, and vigilance. And I know what Congress decided on June 14th, 1717, Flag Day, that it still rings true that not even the evil terrorist of 9-11 can take American spirit away. However, I am showing the same things that flag shows, valor, courage, purity, and innocence, to write to you to say, I do not feel like a U.S. citizen being treated this way in my beloved country. I'm not getting a fair process, I'm not getting represented properly, and I'll give the benefit of the doubt of a pandemic, but the other unjust treatment is not the way that our founding fathers intended this process to be. Not to mention, no pandemic, no terrorist attack, no police riots, etc. can stop our country from being the greatest on earth, upholding the law, and staying true to the following one's constitutional rights. This is just the surface of my concerns. As you will see, they only get worse with illegal search and seizure, I was a victim of cohesion, I think she means coercion, as it's mental and physical. 
Sure, you can tell I'm educated. <laughs> I know Miranda versus Arizona, etc. However, a person cannot perform under this scrutiny, abuse, cohesion, again, coercion. It's coercion, etc. And that's what has happened throughout this entire process. Besides due to info from my PI, I don't even feel that El Paso has jurisdiction, not to mention the wrong individual. I reach out to you to let you know that I'm very concerned with the process because I know that you will uphold it in the integrity of the court. The judicial system that I know does not allow a person who is presumed innocent and who is to improperly defend themselves to be subjected to daily abuse and the Eighth Amendment violations, does not deny Fifth and Sixth Amendment or speedy fair trials, does not interfere with attorney-client privilege, yes, I can tell you so many situations in which I know they are listening, does not physically, mentally, and emotionally abuse innocent people waiting on trial, does not allow that individual to be in danger, not just from inmates but from employees also, and does not avoid these situations causing an individual's mental health to decline and safety be at risk. I live each day not knowing what will happen to me next, what person will put something in my food, what rights I'll be denied tomorrow, or what injuries will occur next. I support law enforcement, I support our military, our country, and I know that a few bad apples incidents can ruin it for good people. I extend my concerns to you as a first step in this because my attorneys have refused to let you know due to the public knowing. My life is on the line. I'm innocent and I'm ready to return home and use the doctorate degree EDD that I worked diligently for and cannot do that if I'm not afforded those rights. If I'm fighting for my life daily, I'm clearly not a threat to myself, etc. Again, this is just the surface of my concerns and ask that something be done so I can get this behind me, move past this trial in life, forgive those who persecuted and afflicted me, continue to be a soldier for Christ, and repair my mental state and most importantly, grieve. I need those constitutional rights in order to be successful and participate in this process. I'm a prisoner bound in chains, like Paul said, but I know my Bible's not bound. I also know he appointed people in authority to respect them because they are chosen to uphold the law. Please accept this as my letter of letting you know first, not going over the court's head, and following the appropriate chain of command. Something has to be done, sir. Thank you. God bless. Dr. Letitia Stout. P.S. If there is any way possible to receive acknowledgement of your receipt of this letter so that I know you are aware. Well, that was an interesting read. That was Letitia Stout's letter addressed to the judge and written on August 12th of this year, complaining about her terrible, terrible treatment in jail. Poor Muffin. Anyway, we're going to talk more about the letter in depth as well as my reaction to it tomorrow during our live stream right here at 6 p.m. Central for the weekly news roundup. Please join us then. We have a lot to talk about. We're going to cover Letitia Stout's case. We're going to go over updates for the Vallow Daybell case and all kinds of other things that will come up. So, channel memberships are now available. You can join below. Just hit that join button. That will give you access to members-only content, special emojis for chat, all kinds of fun stuff. As always, you can still follow me on Patreon. And please join our Discord server. The letter, if you'd like to read it again, is posted there. And Discord is totally free for anyone to join. And you can come chat with us around the clock. It's a lot of fun. So, I hope to see you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Central, right here. And we'll talk about all the news in these cases and a whole lot more. Until then, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.